weeks ago, I went away with a few friends of mine, and we went to a spa for peace and quiet. That's right. We paid for peace and quiet. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain that my parents' parents didn't have to pay for peace and quiet. They lived in a much more quiet time than we do. Everything has become louder. If you think about it, even the way that we communicate has gotten louder over the time. When my parents' parents were young and they wanted to communicate with someone, chances are they sat in a quiet room and wrote a letter. And then maybe later on, it became a telegram. And then eventually, a telephone. But not every house had a telephone. Eventually, every house had a telephone, and it was a rotary phone where you had to actually drag your finger in order to make the phone call. And then it was a push-button phone, and then it became a cordless phone. So we could take the noise that was on the wall in our kitchen, and we could take it to any room in our house. And then after this, the cordless phone came the cell phone. And this meant that the noise that was now in our house we could take out into the streets so that other people could hear it too. And then came the iPhone and the Android. And basically what that means is that we have an office in our pocket and we can take it anywhere we go. And the same is true with transportation. If you think about it, my parents' parents, they walked everywhere they went. And then after that, maybe it was a bicycle, and then after that, a car. And then cars got fancier, and there were music in the car, so you could listen to something while you were driving down the road. And then after the car came the train, and then the plane, and then a rocket. And now, irony of all ironies, you can take the phone in your pocket and dial up a car to come and get you through Uber. The world is a noisier place. And when I think about it, I just want to say, shh, quiet. Now, don't get me wrong. I love technology, and I love automated items. I wake up to an alarm clock, and I immediately walk into my kitchen where I turn on my coffee maker and I make myself a coffee. And then from there, I go to my microwave where I actually heat up my oatmeal in the morning. And then from there, I go to my desktop, my computer, and I read my favorite blog posts of the day and visit my favorite sites. But here's what I know to be true. With every piece of technology that comes along and each piece of automation that we let in, we are also squeezing out the quiet. And it makes me want to say, shh. We've already talked about the cell phone. We already know all the different noises that it can make. We can make a phone call on it. We can FaceTime on it. We can watch a podcast or listen to YouTube. We can listen to music and text, Snapchat. We can do all of these things just on our iPhone. And then we go home where we think it's quiet, but guess what? There's more noise. There's the washing machine and the dryer, the TV. There's gaming systems. There's Alexa and Siri. And if you guys are fighting with your brothers and your sisters, there's that noise too. And then we leave our house and we go outside where there's even more noise. There are cars and trucks and construction, dogs barking and lawnmowers. Everywhere we go, there is noise. Even in our schools, which everybody tells us are supposed to be pretty quiet. But our schools, there are teachers talking at us, information coming over a loudspeaker, lockers slamming, people walking in the hallways, the lunchroom is loud, gym is loud, there is noise everywhere we go. And it makes me want to say, shh, quiet. And that's not the only kind of noise, by the way. There's another kind of noise that I call visual noise. This isn't the noise that we hear with our ears, but it's the noise that we have to look at. And there's a lot of it. 
Instagram, it can be noisy. It's picture after picture after picture. Advertisements in magazines, those are noisy because they're ads kind of yelling at us about all the things that we should want. The billboards as we drive down the street, that's noise. It's all visual noise. The countertop in my kitchen, it's filled with noise right now. There's a stack of mail to go through. It's my kids' homework assignments to organize. Keys and hats and all sorts of things, work projects, all sitting right there on the kitchen counter, just screaming at me, making noise. Noise is everywhere. When I wake up, the first thing I do is I walk into my closet, and there's a lot of noise in my closet. My closet's packed with clothes. Some of them I wear and some of them I don't. And the ones that I don't wear, they're yelling at me. Why am I still here? Put me on. Try me. Wear me. Noise. It's all noise. And then I go into my office. My office are ceiling to floor books. And I love books. And I love to read. But the books on the shelves, they're yelling at me too. And they're saying the same thing. Pick me, pick me, read me. Why'd you buy me if you aren't going to read me? Noise is everywhere. Makes me want to say, shh, quiet. Think about this. Think about if from the moment you got up in the morning and your feet hit the floor, you had to run all day long. Picture that. So you get up. First thing you have to do is 25 jumping jacks. Then you run downstairs to breakfast, and you don't get to sit while you eat breakfast, by the way. You have to run in place. And then you're done with breakfast, and you jump rope upstairs. And you do laps through your, through your shower. And then you run downstairs, and you go to school. But you don't walk to school or get driven to school. You have to run to school. And then after you, you get to school, by the way, you don't sit in a seat and learn. You jog in place all day long that you are in school. Picture this. And then you come home, and you do more of the same. You do your homework, but you do it while you're running. You eat your dinner, but you do it while you're running in place. By the end of the day, you would be exhausted. Your muscles would hurt, and you would be exhausted. And actually, that's kind of exactly what we do to our brains, because there is noise everywhere we go. Makes me want to say, shh, quiet. Now, this noise, it's not our, all, all of our fault. Because, believe it or not, in Silicon Valley, there are scientists and researchers who are there trying to figure out how to actually get us addicted to the technology that we have. They're trying to get us to figure, they're trying to figure out how to get us to spend just five more minutes on that gaming system so that we can get to the next level. Or how we might find three more followers. Or how we might just pick up the phone and check it one more time to make sure that we didn't miss a message or a voicemail. And did you know that there's a whole body of research out there that says you cannot multitask? Now, there are people out there who say all these gadgets that we're selling, they're actually to make you more productive. But the truth is that we cannot multitask. I like to say to my boys that you're either receiving or you're creating. And the idea is that we create moderation where we're doing a little bit of both, where sometimes we are receiving the work that people create, but other times we're putting that work away and we're actually creating work. And did you know that since 2007, when the iPhone first came out, we are less happy as a nation and more stressed out? Now, it's not exclusively because of the iPhone, because there are a lot of good things that can come from that iPhone that we've got. But when we overuse it, and when we don't have enough quiet, it can create in us stress and anxiety. And we turn it into our BFF, as opposed to really connecting with the people who are right there with us in the moment. Now, there are so many good reasons to want to actually embrace quiet. My son loves YouTuber Casey Neistat, one of his favorite people. 
And you know what Casey says? My son wanted to meet him. And so we were going to take a trip. We were actually flying to New York, and we tried to reach out to him to see if we could have a meeting with him. And you know what he told us in, a, in reply? He said, I choose not to meet with any of my followers at all. Because if I did that, I would have the schedule of a manager. I would be managing all of the noise and all of the requests in my life. Instead, I keep a maker's schedule. I eliminate that external noise so that I can have the schedule not of a manager, but of a maker. And some of our most famous people in American history, right? Albert Einstein and Charles Dickens and Steve Jobs. You know what they all have in common? They all walked a lot and long distances. And you know why they walked? Because they knew that when they took long walks, they could have quiet. And some of their best ideas came in quiet. And Serena Williams, and Tiger Woods, they have what we call a silent eye. And you know what that means? It means that these elite athletes have the capacity to block out all the noise around them to find quiet. So here's the thing. If you feel like I feel, and you have come to treasure quiet, the way I do, knowing that it's so hard to find in this busy, busy, loud world, there are just a few things that we can do to add more quiet into our lives. So one thing we might be able to do is we can make an agreement with ourselves that when we're driving in the car, we won't listen to AirPods or play a video game. Instead, we might just daydream outside our window and just let our mind wander in the quiet. Or with the permission of our parents, we might decide to take a walk around the block, a quiet walk around the block. Or like my oldest son, you can find a little nook in the house that's just yours. He had a little space that he called honeysuckle paradise. And it, would where, it was where he would disappear to when he just wanted quiet. And then there's my youngest son who found a quiet hobby. He does pottery. So it's just Jack and his clay every Saturday morning, a quiet hobby. And if all else fails, you might just decide to go to sleep in quiet. No music, no TV, no cell phone, just quiet. Shh, quiet. Now, of all the reasons that you should find quiet and seek quiet and treasure and protect the quiet that you have, of all the reasons Here's the most important one. Because you were born to shine. You were born to shine. At the House of Shine, where I work, we believe that inside every single person is a contribution just waiting to happen. That you are born uniquely wired to make a contribution that is different than anybody else's. But how do you know what it is? How do you know? You might think you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, a teacher, engineer, a poet, a musician, an artist, any one of those things. And we don't come with an instruction manual. And it's not as easy as it is in Harry Potter where we put on the sorting hat. We don't have either of those things. But guess what we do have? There is something that we are given and it's a lone voice that lives inside of you. And it wants to be heard, and it's asking to be heard. And if it's talking and you don't listen, and you never stop and you never listen, eventually it will go away. Now I want you to imagine that this voice that's trying to talk to you, it's like a phone call that it's trying to have with you between your head and your heart. And there are a bunch of things that it wants to talk to you about. It wants to ask you about your strengths. It wants to know when you feel the strongest. What are you doing during the day when you feel the strongest? And your head wants to ask your heart all about the hobbies that you're interested in. It wants to know why. Because it wants you to know that if you pursue those hobbies, 
you can actually turn them into maybe a job. And your head wants to ask your heart all about the interests that you have and the things that upset you and rile you up. Because your head wants to tell your heart that when you know what those things are, that your biggest, most important contribution could be sitting inside one of those things. And your head wants to ask your heart all about what it needs to feel happy and fulfilled. Because you can't feel happy and fulfilled if your head doesn't have time to talk to your heart or cannot hear what your heart is telling it matters most. And your head wants to talk to your heart about the experiences that you have in life, what they mean to you, which, what makes you happy, what makes you sad. That voice in your head might be talking to you right now. It might be saying, that experience, standing up here, right here on this stage, I want that experience. I want to do that someday. But here's the thing. Your head is trying to have a phone call with your heart. It's trying to talk to you about all of these things. But here's what I know is true. You were born to shine, but you were born in a noisy house, on a noisy street, in a noisy neighborhood, in a noisy city, in a noisy state, in a noisy country, in a noisy, noisy world. And your head, through all of that, is trying to talk to your heart wants to have a phone conversation. So pick up the phone and listen. Shh, quiet. Thank you. <laughs>